What's up, everybody? Welcome back to John's Fantasy Football Show. I'm Jared. That's John. Guys, if you followed us the past week, or you followed John's picks the last week, if you're on TikTok at all, you've seen that he has been spot on with all his picks. Between last week and the Thursday night game picks, he went 14 for 16 in the last week. That is incredible, John. John, how do you do it? How has this happened? I don't know. Honestly, it's just the way that I, I guess one of the things that I have used in the past is because I have an engineering degree and I use the thought process. Engineering is all about the thought process. So engineers don't just jump to conclusions. So you don't want to be like, oh, this guy has a good matchup. Boom. He's already going to do well. You want to try to go how I approach the games is I, I think about the game and how I think the game is going to play out. And then I'm, I look at the matchups and I'm like, okay, I use the matchups to validate how I think the game is going to go. And honestly, uh, in the beginning of the season, I was doing okay. I made some good picks here and there. But like you said, this this last week or week or two, mm-hmm. I've been hitting my stride and it's just been working out. So I'm glad that I've hopefully I've been able to help you guys win some of your matchups. And as we get into the playoffs, it seems like I'm hitting my stride at the right time. So hopefully I can continue giving you guys some good picks. Exactly. Like you said, you're hitting your stride at the right time. Playoffs are coming up. If this isn't a sign to go join our Patreon, the link will be in the description. Follow us on TikTok so that you see every single post about fantasy football that John makes so you can try and win your league. I don't know what it is. I mean, he is hitting his stride right at the perfect time for playoff season to try and win your league. So let's keep it going with this episode and try and uh, win some people's leagues. Week 13 reactions. Now, last week we made a whole podcast on the RB2 situation. A lot of uh, starters are getting injured. And we're looking at all those players again, and we're going to try and rank them for this week. Now, John, maybe there are some players like Chuba Hubbard, who maybe you didn't like last week, but now you like this week because of a certain matchup. Um, But I do want to emphasize that this ranking is only for the RB2s, not total running backs in fantasy football. So start us off with that. Yeah. So again, just talking about the RB twos, cause I've been getting a lot of questions on TikTok, on the Patreon, like TikTok comments, Instagram comments, YouTube comments, asking about players like AJ Dillon, Chuba Hubbard, Jamal Williams, Hilliard, Freeman, Deonta Foreman, Kareem Hunt, Jeff Wilson, Samaj P. Ryan, if Mixon doesn't play Alex Collins. So I want to basically just rank those players. Those are 10 players that I listed and basically rank them how I like them. Um, from best to worst this week. So you guys get an idea of that RB2 situation if you're deciding between a couple players. So the first guy on my list that I think is going to do the best is Chuba Hubbard. And I know on my waiver wire podcast a couple weeks ago, I said, I don't really like Chuba Hubbard that much. I would rather have Hilliard. Well, I do have Hubbard ranked higher than Hilliard this week, but I do like Hilliard more long-term because Hubbard has tough matchups. Now, remember when the Carolina Panthers played the Falcons earlier in the season, Chuba Hubbard was the starting running back. McCaffrey wasn't there. And Hubbard had 24 carries in that game. He had over 15 fantasy points. I think that's going to happen again. And a lot of you might be saying, well, what about Amir Abdullah? He did get some targets in the passing game more than Hubbard did. And he had about the same amount of carries that Hubbard did last game when McCaffrey was out. But I'm still not ready to to go all in on Abdullah. I don't think he's fantasy relevant yet. And I still think Hubbard is the beneficiary, especially because we expect this game to play out. Panthers at home coming off a bye against the Falcons. We expect the Panthers to be leading this game. I would not be surprised. And I actually expect Hubbard to get at least 20 carries and maybe a couple catches out of the backfield. So I do like Hubbard out of all the guys I mentioned. Number two would be Samaj P. Ryan if Joe Mixon missed the game on Sunday. He's, he's mispracticed all week with an illness. It doesn't seem to be COVID related, but a report came out just a few minutes ago that Mixon is expected to play. I rostered P. Ryan in one of my 12 man leagues because my running back situation is tough, but I probably won't use him because Mixon will play. But if Mixon doesn't play, P. Ryan is a really good option and a good offense. Number three is Jeff Wilson. He's the front runner, as Kyle Shanahan says, to lead this backfield in week 14 because Elijah Mitchell has a concussion and doesn't seem like he's going to play, didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. If he doesn't, Wilson would get the start. Now, the reason I don't have Wilson ahead of Hubbard or Pirine is because when Wilson played this past week against the Seahawks, he had to go in for a couple of plays because Mitchell got hit in the head. Now, Mitchell returned after a few plays 
and he 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 came right, right back in the game and finished the game out. But then Monday, Mitchell woke up with concussion symptoms. So that's why he's not practicing this week. But when Wilson went in for Mitchell, when he got hit in the head, Wilson's knee flared up. So now that's why I don't have Wilson ahead of the other two guys is because there's a possibility that he goes into the game against the Bengals and his knee flares up again or something like that. But since he's the front runner to start and you never, you can never really expect an injury on a player. I still think Wilson is a good option. Number four would be Jamal Williams. He has a really tough matchup with Denver, but Detroit coming off a win, their first win of the season. I think Jamal Williams will be targeted in the passing game. I think they will be trailing in this game. So Williams has a floor of eight to 10 fantasy points because of his usage in the backfield and in the pass game. Number five is Devonta Freeman, because he seems like he has a good hold on this offense in Baltimore. He seems like he's the lead back since Latavius Murray got hurt. Latavius Murray comes back and Freeman still resumes the starting role. The reason I don't have Freeman higher is because they're playing the Browns and it's actually a really tough matchup. I don't love all the Ravens players this week because the Browns, they played the Browns two weeks ago and it was a low scoring game. I don't think either team got to 20 points and the Browns had a bye last week. So consecutive games, they're going to play the Ravens. They're going to come out with a good game plan and play good defense. So I'm worried about the Ravens players, but I think Freeman is still a decent option. Number six is Kareem Hunt right behind Freeman. I think Hunt and the Browns will get back to the ground game. I think they want to use their tandem of running backs. You know, usually teams, like we said, once they go into a bye, they're like, they reassess their team and they're like, all right, what do we do best? And the Browns are like, we need to run the ball better. So let's go back to the tape against the Ravens and let's figure out how we can run the ball better. And I think they're going to come out and do that. I think Chubb and Hunt are both going to have 15 touches each. Number seven would be Dontrell Hilliard. I do like him one spot ahead of Foreman. Foreman is my eighth ranked player out of these 10 because I think Hilliard has the better potential to break a run and he's more involved in the pass game. Now, McNichols is coming back. That's the reason why I don't have Hilliard and Foreman higher on the list. So there's really three running backs in Tennessee, and it's tough to say which one is going to do the best. I would guess that it's going to be Hilliard, only because of how much they like him and how much, um, I guess, spark he provides. But you got to be careful with those three running backs this week. Number nine is A.J. Dillon. A lot of you are going to be like, why the heck is he so low? He's gotten 20 fantasy points each of the last two games or over 20 fantasy points. And coming off a bye, why don't you think they're going to use Dillon more? Well, Aaron Jones came back two weeks ago, only had eight carries in the game, but had a bye last week to rest his MCL. And I think this is a game that Aaron Jones gets 20 touches and A.J. Dillon get, maybe gets like five to eight. I think the Packers will be leading, so I think Dillon could get eight carries, but I don't think he's going to be fantasy relevant. If you have Aaron Jones, definitely start him this week. I think he's a good option in a game they should be leading. And then number 10 is Alex Collins. Adrian Peterson doesn't look like he's going to play this week, and he scored a touchdown last week. Collins didn't play. So it seems like Collins and Rashad Penny are going to be sharing work, and you might be like, well, they're playing the Texans. Don't you think that Collins is going to have a good game against one of the worst run defenses? I really don't trust any of these Seattle running backs because of how bad that offensive line is. I think Russ has a good game, and I think it's more of a passing game for the Seahawks. And then one more player I wanted to mention, I just got a report that Tevin Coleman is rolled out for the game for the Jets. So it's going to be Ty Johnson and Austin Walter sharing carries against the Saints on Sunday. Now, the Saints have the best run defense in the NFL. They let up the least amount of yards. They have let up the least amount of fantasy points. So I, if I were to rank Ty Johnson somewhere in here, I would probably put Ty Johnson in between Deonta Foreman and A.J. Dillon. So just ahead of Dillon, but just after Foreman because he's going to get some volume. But like I said, they have the best run defense, the Saints do. So it's going to be tough for the Jets to even put up 10 points on Sunday. Who is that backup for the Jets? This guy, well, Ty Johnson and Austin Walter. Austin I don't really, Walter. I don't know anything about him other than the fact that he scored a touchdown last week. I don't know where he went to school or how long he's been in the league, but he's going to be sharing carries. That's incredible. Yeah. Austin, Wal- two first name. That's weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'll pick him up just because of that. Austin Walter. Huh? And then Adrian Peterson, this guy just shows up out of nowhere again and yeah. comes out of the Seahawks, scores a, a goal line touchdown. Yep. He just he's been joined every, every week. He's going to join a different team and get a <laughs> touchdown and then just go to another team. 
<laughs> just one yard though like you, yeah. anything further than that i can't score but one yeah. yard yeah i'll go i'll get in the end zone the, they're at the two yard line the coach is like oh peterson you, you want to hit this one in and he's like you got can you get it a little bit closer because yeah. i'm not gonna maybe be able like, to get it in <laughs> maybe a qb sneak and then i'll be ready like that yeah. that's my that's my zone right there yeah. first to, <laughs> inside the one yard line that he's that kind of back yeah he's just gonna run as fast as he can and that's it <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah you know what's funny is he's not even like that old i think he's like 33 or 34 he's like really? not even that old and he, yeah, he, but he feels so old as like a running back you know yeah. like the life of a running back is like so short-lived yeah um, i want to look it up really fast but whoa all right he's kind of old he's 36 Oh wow! <laughs> no, he's not. Never mind. He seems so, he seems like he still has more years in him. So I figured it would be like around that thirty three range. Honestly, thirty six per quarterback is starting to get old. Yeah, what's <laughs> running back? Ben? Big Ben's about thirty six, right? Thirty eight. Yeah, he's around there. He looked really bad in the first half, and then he just sparked something in the second half. Yeah, you knew against the Vikings defense isn't really that good. So you knew they were going to put up some points. I didn't think it was going to be as close as it was, though. Big Ben's 39. That's incredible. Wow. But yeah. it, it reminded that game yesterday reminded me of um, when they faced the Chargers and the Chargers went up like 20 points. Yeah. And they come all the way back, but they just didn't have enough time left. Right. So. Yeah. Their, def- their defense has just been atrocious, every aspect of it. Yeah. I feel bad because um, I'm a Michigan fan, and obviously I vouched for Devin Bush years ago. Yeah. And man, I, I, I hope that it's – like, I think it's the injury that may have caused him to just not be as good. I don't know, but I saw all the Twitter comments saying, like, get Devin Bush off the team. They didn't renew his contract – or they didn't get his uh, last year of his contract. Um, so I feel really mm-hmm. bad because – he was so good in college. He was so fast. One of the fastest ones behind, um, uh, uh, who's the, the, um, linebacker that went to the bucks, Devin white. Yeah. Devin white. Yeah. Devin white was uh, with him and Devin white were the fastest linebackers like ever. Yeah. And as soon as Bush got that injury, I think he, he's declined. So mm-hmm. but one thing on the Steelers, is this basically it for them? Playoff yeah, they're off. done. Yeah, they as far as making the playoffs, yeah, they're done. They would have had to win that game. And I know they're still right on the bubble, but they're not going to be able to make it. Their schedule is too tough down the stretch that it's it's just they they won't be able to make it. And did you see Claypool uh celebrating? Yes. <laughs> Somebody made a TikTok on it, but I did some Vikings fan made a TikTok on it, but yeah, Claypool with 30 seconds left or something, he like he's like and then this lineman comes over and grabs him. He's like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> How do you celebrate a first down as the clock's running? You're down a touchdown. Yeah. Like the first thing in your head is like, go me. Let's go. Yeah. first down." <laughs> I don't even know what he was thinking. Maybe he thought it was college. So like the clock stopped when you get a first down. Yeah. But that's he's been out of the league for two or <laughs> out of the college for two years. Like, yeah. Bad. All right, we're moving on to fantasy strategies. Now, this is going to be my favorite segment because I am in a bit of a pickle here um, in my 12-man and my six-man league. Um, Nick Folk is on a bye, and he's yeah. been my leading scorer <laughs> in both my leagues, scoring 21 points, 16, 18, 20 again. I mean, yeah. he has been my... Honestly, behind the quarterback, he's been like my second best player, which yep. is crazy to think about. And he's on a bye, and I'm stuck. I don't know who to pick up. I, I did pick up Dustin Hopkins, but I see you have a different kicker, so I probably should have just waited until today. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about the kickers, and then you're going to talk about the defenses for this week. Yeah, so <laughs> I... Thank you for helping me choose something to talk about for this segment because there's no there's no buys to talk about about next week looking ahead to your players buys because there's no more buys we're going to get a lot of football on Sunday and as we move forward but like you said you said you had Nick Folk on a buy 
So you were like, well, what kicker should I pick up? Like I've been, it's been getting 10 plus every point, every time. So like, can, is there any kicker that can get like 10 plus this week? So I looked into it and I'm going to give some reasoning behind this because a lot of people think, well, kickers are just luck. They shouldn't even be a part of the fantasy football, but I disagree. I think you always want the Patriots kicker. Like even when Goskowski was there, he was one of the top in the league, him and Tucker. And the reason is because the Patriots are so good at moving the ball down the field and playing field position. And that's what you want to look for. So when I look at the slate of games this week, I'm like, okay, what team is going to be able to control the ball, move the ball down the field pretty successfully and get a decent amount of possessions against the other team and get close to scoring range, but maybe not be able to get into the end zone every time. Cause we want our kicker to be able to, you know, attempt some field goals. And the guy that comes to mind for me is Randy Bullock, the kicker for the Tennessee Titans. Now, we, they think they're going to re- be able to control the game and move the ball down the field because they're playing against the Jaguars, they're at home, and they just had a bye last week. So I think they're going to be focusing on the run game, focusing on defense. So against the Jaguars, they should have a lot of possessions. They should be able to move the ball down the field. But I think a really important thing is I don't think they're going to be able to get into the end zone that much, maybe 50% of the time. So maybe 50% of the time they have to kick a field goal when they get down to the red zone, which is good because that's better for Bullock, more chances for Bullock. He did miss a couple, I think one field goal and one extra point two weeks ago. But I think after the bye being at home in the warmer weather, I think it's going to be good for Bullock. And I don't think they're going to be able to get into the end zone because they revolve around their running backs. A.J. Brown is still on IR. Um, Julio Jones is expected to return, but we don't know how healthy he is. So they might have trouble getting it into the end zone, which will be good for Bullock's opportunities close to the uh, close to field goal range. I will say that um, I looked up because for me, I usually look at red zone efficiency. So meaning how many times does this team get into the red zone and do they score touchdowns when they get red zone or do they kick field goals? Right. And it's funny Tennessee overall in 2021 is ranked 11th in red zone efficiency, meaning that uh, this stat just shows how many times they score a touchdown when they're in the red zone. And it says mm-hmm. 62% score a touchdown in the red zone or they turn the ball over or whatever. Okay. But I think um, in the last three games for Tennessee, they've been it's, 50%. Yeah, that, you, that's – which is of the literally, injuries. yeah, it's bottom of the league. It's tied for Detroit Raiders and Washington at 50%. So exactly. That's literally perfect for them. And it makes sense because they lost Henry. So all, exactly. the, goal, all the goal line and red zone stuff would go to Henry. Now they don't have him anymore. Exactly. No Henry, no AJ Brown. And that's a great stat that you pulled up. So they're bottom of the league, bottom three or four in the league, 50%. So like I said, 50% of the time, they're going to go down there and Bullock is going to get an opportunity to make a field goal. I'll mm-hmm. take that any day. I think I picked up Bullock in one of my leagues. I, I also have Falk in one of my league, my undefeated league that I'm 13-0 and in. And I picked up Bullock. I didn't drop Falk. You still got to keep Falk, but picked up Bullock and he's only projected, I think six points in like six and a half or something. I'm expecting him to get over 10 and be, be close to what folk usually does. But then I'll be like, all right, thank you Bullock for doing your job. And then I drop him and slide folk right back in. It's just like the NFL. They just swap kickers out every week. Yeah. It's just like Belichick being like, all right, you're in this week and then next week you get zero touches, but you did good last week. (laughs) (laughs) You did your job. Uh, I only need you for that week. It's, yeah, it's the it. business. <laughs> so, yeah, I man, I'm looking at Washington. Washington's 29th overall at 50%, but the last three games they've had 58%. So they've been doing a little better. Right. Um, but I figured they, they face some. Um, who do they face? Uh, the Cowboys this week. No, no, no. They face the Giants. Wait, what the frick? I've been bamboozled. What are you looking at? <laughs> oh my gosh. Did Dustin Hopkins get traded or something? He's on. Yeah, he's on the Chargers, isn't he? Dude, he has a red jersey on. I thought it was Washington. <laughs> his, his picture has what, what, his what picture. team is he on? Chargers. Yeah, that's what I thought. But why does he have a Washington jersey on? He was on Washington last year. Oh, I don't want him. I want. Oh, my God. You wanted the Chargers kicker? <laughs> 
No, I wanted the Washington kicker. I didn't want the Chargers kicker. Oh. Oh, well, my gosh. Why do they do that? Well, you're going to pick up Bullock anyway, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'll take 10 points. <laughs> Actually, I can't. He's, Why? He's taken. Shoot. Yep. Shoot. Bullock's ta- oh, wait. No, you took him. <laughs> you- <laughs> wait, really? <laughs> yeah, you took him in that league. So I'll have to check my other league. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, Bullock's available. I'm picking him up right now. Okay. <laughs> Dustin Hopkins, get the frick out of here. <laughs> Un believable like he has the red the washington jersey on they didn't update the picture yeah they didn't update it that's annoying oh thank god we talked about kickers today oh god i'd I'd be cheering for the washington kicker (laughs) you'd be like yes washington kicker got another one and then you'd check your fantasy and be like why does my kicker have zero (laughs) (laughs) wow that's annoying (laughs) <laughs> That's annoying. I hate that. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the defenses. I'm sick of this kicker shit. <laughs> Just Nick Folk's got to get back ASAP. Yeah, he's uh, messing everything up. <laughs> one thing about Folk is that I talked to you about this. He's always questionable. <laughs> like, I don't, I've never seen a guy every single week be questionable as a kicker and it's the same thing they just say his knee like just yeah knee. don't they learn don't doesn't the nfl learn like that reporting be like he's playing like like he's never missed a game this like this year yeah i i think if he's questionable like he would have missed a couple but he's the most reliable kicker there's yeah. no way he's just old and he's probably sore yeah crazy all right move on to defenses so these the defenses I want to talk about, I'm, I'm not going to give... So these aren't defenses for this week. I want to look ahead. This is kind of like planning ahead, not for buys, but for playoff schedules. So for some of you, the playoffs, the fantasy playoffs start in week 15. For our league, or all of my leagues that I'm in, they start in week 16. So I'm going to give you guys a couple defenses. I have one for week 15, and I have a couple for week 16, 17, and 18. And some of these defenses I mentioned twice, they have good matchups in two of these four weeks. So maybe you want to pick them up, stash them on your bench, because if you can get 10 points out of your defense, like a solid 10 points, that's another, you know, that's a good, you know, start to the week and good um, base to have. Um, Defenses still matter and the matchup, uh, it could be good for some of these teams. So in week 15 next week, a good streaming option could be San Francisco against Atlanta. They're at home against the Falcons. Falcons give up the most fantasy points to defenses. And I think you should pick up San Francisco now if you're looking to do that because Atlanta plays at Carolina this week. And I think Carolina is going to be one of the top three defenses this week. So once people see that, they're going to be like, oh, wow, Falcons are bad again. Let me go and pick up the defense they're playing against next week. And it's going to be San Francisco. So try to get them on your team before everybody tries to waver for them. In week 16, which is the first week of the playoffs for my leagues, Chargers against the Houston Texans. Texans give up the third most fantasy points to defenses. And Davis Mills was just named the starting quarterback for the rest of the season. So Tyrod Taylor is not going to start any game from here on out. The other one, Seattle is playing Chicago. They give up the sixth most fantasy points to opposing defenses. So those are two good matchups. In one of my leagues, I have the Chargers, or I think in two of them, or actually three of them. I'm not sure, but I have <laughs> I have the Chargers and the Patriots defense. So I have the Chargers for week 16 against Houston. And then in week 17, I have the Patriots at home against the Jaguars, which should be a great game for them. And then that's, week 17. That's not even fair. Yeah, it's not even fair. Like I'm already I'm already set for 10 plus points both of those weeks, which is crazy. Your family's gonna hate you when Christmas comes around. Yeah, <laughs> you're All gonna the be people like, I'm playing against. Screw you, no John. gift for you this year. <laughs> you stole all my money in this league, <laughs> dude. There's one kid in my undefeated league. I'm 13 and 0, and I'm friends with a bunch of the guys. And one of the guys I saw last night, and I'm like, uh, and he's like, oh, I, I was talking to this one guy in the other league, and he's so pissed that you won last week because I I won. I was texting you about it. I was up by three points going into Monday night and I needed Nick Falk to Nick Falk plus three points to beat Stefan Diggs and Diggs had nine points and Falk had seven. And then, so I had seven plus three, I won by one point to stay undefeated. So I did get lucky, but 
the one guy in the league was talking to my friend that I talked to last night. And he's like, yeah, the guy texted me and he was like, so long as John McNichol is in this league, I will not play in this league ever again. <laughs> and I'm, You're I'm like, taking and the fun out of it. I know he's in my division too. So it's like, he literally starts the year and it's like, okay, boom, he's 0-2 to start the year. Cause he knows like he's going to play me and most likely get two losses. So he's like, okay, so I can't win the division. So I have to be like the next best team. He's like, the chances that I make the playoffs are like 20%, just like right off the bat. <laughs> He's like, what am I going to do? So I just thought that was funny. But anyway. The only way um, you, that they beat you is like, they know you have dorm debate, right? So they, they can see well, your picks. Yeah, a couple of them do. But I don't think they really follow it that much. They should, but. The only key is to use your picks against you. <laughs> I know. Like I'm not, I'm usually not biased. If I'm playing against somebody, like I could still pick one of their players as a weekly pick. Like I'm not usually biased. I don't usually pick my players as weekly picks. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, just stay tuned uh, for dorm debate. But anyway, week 17, San Francisco, again, they play Houston. Houston gives up third most fantasy points to opposing defenses. And then Seattle, they played Detroit. They give up ninth most fantasy points to defenses. And then New Orleans Saints, they play Carolina. Carolina gives up the fourth fourth most fantasy points to opposing defenses. So in week 16, I mentioned Seattle. Week 15, I mentioned San Francisco. San Francisco. And then we, in week 17, I mentioned San Francisco and Seattle. So maybe you want to pick up one of those two teams. They have pretty good matchups down the stretch here. And then week 18, the Saints again, they're at home. Or I don't know if they're at home, but they're playing the Falcons. They give up the most fantasy points to opposing defenses. And then Green Bay playing Detroit. They give up the ninth most fantasy points to opposing defenses. So then I said the Saints in week 17 and Saints in week 18. So if you're looking for defenses, some that might be available that have good matchups, obviously the Bills have some good matchup Patriots, but I'm trying to give you some defenses that you could actually pick up. So San Francisco, Seattle, or New Orleans, I would try to target those because they each have three good matchup or two good matchups each of the next um, out of the next four weeks. So just a thing to keep an eye on. If you have an open roster spot, you could utilize it for those, those defenses. I really should have waited to pick people up and defenses up until today. Cause I, <laughs> did you already decide? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, like as far as for this week or for the playoffs, you mean? Well, this week and kind of the playoffs, like I, I kept, um, I kept Dallas as like my playoff team right? for defense. But this week I picked up uh, the Saints against the Jets. Okay, uh, that's good. But I don't think I'll even need the defense to do well this week. Like I don't need to win. And I think I should have just prepared for playoffs, you know? Right. I, I mean, what you could do. I mean, they faced Tampa in 15, which sucks really bad. But then they got yeah. Miami and Carolina. But who knows if I'll even make it to for this for the Saints at least. Right. I mean, I would be fine because Dallas is Dallas is a decent defense and they do play the NFC East. But I would be fine if San Francisco is available. You could pick them up because then you would use the Saints this week. Then you would use San Francisco against Atlanta in week 15. Then you would use um, you could pick up maybe Chargers or Seahawks. And then you could have San Francisco or New Orleans in week 17 and then New Orleans against Atlanta in week 18. I don't know how many roster spots you have, but just like an idea there. Yeah, I'm looking at the Chargers right now. They're they're available. I think I might pick them up instead of the Cowboys, Mm -hmm. but we'll see. Let's move on to uh, week 14 predictions. Now we have games that John loves, games that John hates, his weekly pick and his must sit. Now, I don't think you have your weekly picks yet. But you have some people that you've narrowed down as always, but then you do have a must sit player. So we're going to say that last. So make everyone wait. And unless you skip the video and then you're weird, man. So let's go to <laughs> games that John loves. Just give us the watch time. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> games that John loves. Start us off. Well, last week I said the Bills and, or the, I said the Buccaneers and the Falcons as my first game that I love and both teams scored a lot of points. So that turned out good. And this game this week, the first uh, game that I like is the Bills and Bucks. That's kind of a tougher game to predict because the Bills are coming off a loss and the Bucks are coming off a game against the Falcons where they let up a lot of points, but also scored a lot of points. But I think this could be kind of like that game. Remember the Chiefs and the Bucks last year? Uh, when Tyree Kill went off, but the Chiefs went into into uh, into Tampa Bay and won. 
I think this could be similar to that. Bills are going to Tampa Bay. It's going to be a warmer climate than it was last week for the Bills. And I think, how do you beat the Buccaneers? It's by throwing the ball. You really can't run the ball against them. Well, that actually works out for the Bills because the Bills don't run the ball at all. So I think it's upgrade pass catchers for Bills, upgrade everybody for the Buccaneers because it's Brady and I think Buffalo's defense plays better, but you can't really sit anybody, especially with Godwin breaking the franchise record for catches last week. Fournette's been really good. Gronk has been good. Mike Evans, he if if Tredavious White was still in the game, I would say maybe fade Mike Evans, but Tredavious White torn ACL, so you're still playing Evans and anybody on Tampa Bay. And then another game, the 49ers and Bengals. I think that could be a sneaky high-scoring game, mid to high 20s, maybe even 30s for one of the teams. Um, and then the last game is Chiefs Raiders. Last time the Chiefs and Raiders played, I think four weeks ago, the the Chiefs put up 41, I think, and the Raiders got somewhere between around 15 to 20. So I think it's going to be a pretty high scoring game. I think, I don't think Waller is going to play. So keep an eye on that, but Renfro, you definitely try to get him into your lineup because he's going to have, he's basically guaranteed 10 targets if Waller doesn't play. And then Josh Jacobs with Kenyon Drake, a broken ankle and Jalen Richard on the COVID list. I do like Josh Jacobs could potentially be a weekly pick this week. So watch out for that. All right. Games that you hate. And I see, I agree with this one. I agree with this one wholeheartedly, but yeah. I hope, I hope you don't say what I think you're going to say. So. Okay. So last week, the game that I hated was Giants Dolphins. And I said, Miles Gaskin was my number one must sit. He only ended up with like six points or something. And I said, fade Waddle. Waddle, I think got around 15, which was good for him. He got, he gets volume like always, but Parker and Gesicki didn't do well. Tua didn't do well. So that worked out this week. My game to hate is the Ravens versus Browns. Now, when you look at this game, you're like, all right, the Ravens definitely have more firepower on offense. They have more of a chance to score points and they have more fantasy relevant players. Mark Andrews, Marquise Brown, Lamar Jackson, of course, a lot of people banking on him for this week. So, but then the Browns and the Ravens played two weeks ago. Neither team scored 20 points in that game. Lamar threw four, t- four interceptions, excuse me. And then the Browns had a bye last week. So the Browns play the Ravens, get four interceptions, then have a bye and now play the Ravens again. So they're just basically just breaking down this tape and they're going to be they're basically saying we it would be embarrassing if the Browns lost this game because they played them, got four interceptions. It was close. Then they get a bye to watch the Ravens play and then they get to play the Ravens again. They should have a great, great game plan for this game. I'm actually worried about Lamar. I would fade him if you can. Like if I was deciding between Lamar or Taysom Hill, I would choose Taysom Hill this week. You're kidding the me. Jets. I would. I mean, it's it's tough. The only thing is with uh, the Saints, Deontay Harris is out. He was suspended. So he did have that long touchdown last week. So not as many pass catchers. Troutman is out still, the tight end. So I don't, I don't really love Hill, but I really don't like Lamar either. Lamar would have to get a rushing touchdown for him to meet his projection this week, I think. So I think you f- try to fade some players in this game. I don't think it's going to be high scoring. Usually those defenses play well. But I would be a little bit worried about Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, Devonta Freeman, Lamar, maybe Hunt and Chubb didn't do well last time. I think they're going to come out and run the ball more, but it's still tough. That Ravens defense run defense is good. It's disappointing this episode. (laughs) Who do you have out of those? Anybody in that game? Lamar. (laughs) Well, that's in that's in our sixth man, right? It is, yeah. Hill's so available. There's, there, there's, there's a lot of there's other streaming there. options, but they are risky. And well, you're starting Andrews, right? Yep. Yeah. So then you want to try to keep that stack. It's a tough I don't, decision. I don't mind. I, Andrews will do well regardless. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, and Lamar, Lamar's been doing bad recently. So I guess yeah. I should kind of. I had, I had, I have some buffer because I, uh, Justin Jefferson and Najee. Did really really well for on Thursday night, so right. I have a little bit of buffer with the quarterback. Maybe I should just go conservative because Lamar is like he could he could score thirty or he could score like twelve or fifteen in right. our league. So I don't know. You're probably right. So <laughs> you've been right the last <laughs> week. So um, all right, weekly picks. So you just have a bunch that you've kind of narrowed it down to. What's what's the situation here? The situation isn't great 
for you guys. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I don't really have it narrowed down. I have a list, and the list is close to 15 players. <laughs> it's everyone in the, in the NFL. There's, there's, there's a lot of players that I like with good matchups and good situations, but there's a lot of injury situations to consider, a lot of guys that didn't practice this week. So I'm really going to have to monitor it as the week goes on and as we move into Sunday. And like I told, I told Jared right before we got on, I really don't know my weekly picks until – like 1130. Sometimes I'm going live at noon and 1130, like the inactives and inactives come out and I'm like reassessing the situation. I'm like, okay, what do I think is going to happen? I'm like checking on reports of like how much usage everybody's going to get and weather situations, everything. And sometimes I'm like posting on the Patreon at 1145, my picks and stuff. And I'm like, wait, should I do this guy or this guy? And I still like, I still don't know. Cause I have to like decide it's like a last minute thing to like the injuries and matchups and everything that changes. So like, I really don't know when I go to sleep on Saturday night. I'm, sometimes I don't know who my weekly picks are. So I have a list of like about 15 players. What I will say is that, like I said, Josh Jacobs could potentially be a weekly pick um, because Javante Williams, he was the number one scoring running back in fantasy last week against the Chiefs. The Chiefs run defense is really struggling. And without Kenyon Drake there and with Jalen Richard on the COVID list. I think Josh Jacobs could have a good game. I think they're going to want to use him a lot and probably use the run game a lot. The only thing I would say there, and that I have to do a little bit more research on is last time Jacobs played the chiefs a few weeks ago, he did not do very good at all. I don't even think he had like, I want to say he had like seven carries for 16 yards, which is atrocious. I might be wrong about that, but I know he didn't do very well. So I'm going to take a look at that again. Um, One thing I will say though, is that Elijah Moore hasn't practiced yet this week, and he seems like he's going to be a game-time decision. If you can, pick up Jamison Crowder, because the last couple weeks, Dontrell Hilliard two weeks ago, Russell Gage was my sleeper wide receiver last week. And if Elijah Moore doesn't play, there's a possibility that I choose Jamison Crowder as a weekly pick. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that Crowder is going to go for 30 points. That's not going to happen. Saints defense is pretty good. I don't think the Jets are going to be able to move the ball, but I think Crowder is going to get 10 targets if Elijah Moore doesn't play. Now, I'm kind of reassessing myself here because, like I said last week, I had Rex Burkhead as one of my weekly picks because, and not saying he was going to do really well, but I thought he was, it would exceed expectations and do better than those lower tier running backs. I was wrong about that. He only had like four or five fantasy points because David Johnson was out. So I was thinking, okay, Burkhead's going to get a lot of targets. They're going to be trailing in this game, and he's going to get targets out of the backfield and get most of the rushing work. Now, obviously, that wasn't a good pick because the Texans just got shut out. They weren't even able to move the ball at all. So I'm a little bit worried about that, that the Jets won't be able to move the ball at all without their two starting running backs and without their top two receivers, Corey Davis and if Elijah Moore sits. So I don't, I'm not saying that Crowder's definitely going to be a weekly pick if Elijah Moore sits, but it's something that I'm going to consider. I'm going to consider how many targets he's going to get, and I'm going to consider the fact that the Jets might not be able to move the ball down the field even at all on Sunday. So maybe that doesn't bode well for Crowder because they're going to know to focus on him. But I, I, do, I would say that he is worth an add on your bench if you're looking for a deep wide receiver to play this week. And then... Another guy I do want to mention that could possibly be a weekly pick is Jarvis Landry. We saw the Ravens get destroyed by receivers this past week. And then two weeks ago when the Browns played the Ravens, um, Landry had six catches for 111 yards, I think it was. So that, that was over his projection. That's like 17 fantasy points. So now last week, who did the Ravens play last week? I forget who they played. What is it? The Steelers? Steelers. Yeah, and Deontay Johnson had over 30 fantasy points. So like, and Marlon Humphrey is now torn ACL. He's out for the year. So like this Ravens secondary is like really, really bad. It's so bad. So like, and the Ravens run defense is good. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the Browns choose to attack. Do they choose to attack on the ground and get back to who they are? Or do they go to Landry and start to throw the ball? But I do think if they want to have success in this game, they know they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit. And Landry gets almost 50% of the targets there. And Njoku is out and Harrison Bryan is out, two of their top three tight ends. So I think they might go a little more pass heavy because they don't have the two of their top three tight ends. And they usually play a lot of tight end heavy sets so they could run the ball and get good power running plays. But without their 
without those tight ends, it's just going to be Austin Hooper. So he's a good streaming option, but I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball as well. So if they're going to have to throw it, Jarvis Landry is the main beneficiary there, and he could possibly be a weekly pick. Depending on how reports are, I'm going to look at reports of what the coaching staff is saying, if they want to get back to the ground game or if they know they want to exploit these these cornerbacks on the Ravens. So I would say Josh Jacobs, Jarvis Landry and Jamison Crowder. They're only three of on my three of the people on my on my list. Maybe none of them are my weekly pick, but maybe all three of them will be. So definitely stay tuned for Sunday. Come back and see who I've narrowed my list down to. But those are guys that have on your radar as potential starts this week. Now, contrary to the weekly picks, you actually have a must sit, and these beautiful people have been waiting for thirty minutes. <laughs> for you to say these, this must sit player. So without further ado, let's get to it. So last week, my must sit was Miles Gaskin, only had six points. Now, I really think that this game, uh, it's not one of the games I hate because there's one team that I like, I think has fantasy relevant players. It's the Broncos and Lions game. I think the Broncos has have fantasy relevant, relevant players, Javante Williams, um, Noah Fant, possibly Jerry Judy lead, led the team in targets the past couple of weeks and gets a pretty easy Detroit secondary. But I think the Lions are really going to struggle in this game. And my number one must sit for this week in week 14 is TJ Hawkinson. I think there are a lot of other options at tight end this week. Hawkinson also didn't practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday. He'll probably play Sunday still. But even if he plays, I wouldn't start him. I would rather Austin Hooper. He's probably available in your league because Njoku and Harrison Bryan are out. And Baker likes to throw to the tight ends a lot. So I would I would be fine with you streaming a guy like Austin Hooper or even Jared Cook. If Keenan Allen and Mike Williams miss the game, Jared Cook should get eight targets in that game against the Giants and have a decent floor. If Mike Williams and Keenan Allen play, then I would probably not go with Jared Cook. But I would I would go with Cook. I would go with Hooper over Hawkinson and I would go with cook over Hawkinson, assuming either Mike Williams or Keenan Allen misses the game. But I think Hawkinson won't meet his projection this week. Wow. And you have Hawkinson. So this is no bias at all. Yeah, this is no bias in one of my leagues. I do have Hawkinson and and I'm not starting him this week. So that's just what it is. There you go. All right. So we went a little over on the podcast, but not too bad. Uh, we had a lot of good information. We had kickers, we had running backs, we got tight ends. We covered the whole spectrum of this camera is so freaking broken. <laughs> What's going on with this thing? Um, so as far as like promotions go, I, you guys already know that John's um, live show on TikTok is uh, uh, Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time. It goes till 1245. Uh, the Patreon will be in the description and you can go sign up for that. And then I'm just going to say I'll premiere it right here next week. We whole dorm debate is going to the Giants Cowboys game. This is the first time we're saying this. So anybody who's watching after this is getting a sneak peek. So we're all going to be meeting in New Jersey to go to the Giants Cowboys game, which means that we're going to be on the road. Like dorm debate episode is going to be on the road. John's face football show is going to be on the road. Um, The live show. We're still trying to figure out the live show. But as it stands, we may have a show on Saturday, um, Saturday night, and John will be able to answer any questions that you have just in case when we're at the game on Sunday, because it's at 1 p.m. So it's the first game. So we kind of have to be at the stadium when you usually do your show. Right. So we're going to try and figure that out. But this is just a little sneak peek for the people who stayed after that. You know, we are going to be going to this game. It's going to be content is going to be crazy. Um, but yeah, just stay tuned for that. A lot of updates on it. Um, and yeah, this, you're obviously watching this, go watch the Dornway episode. That one's been popping off. I don't know why, but we talked about the playoffs who's in, who's out. We're trying to predict five weeks in advance for the playoffs So go watch the Dornway episode. Um, and go follow us over on TikTok and on Instagram at Dornway podcast. So hopefully you guys win your week this week and we will see you guys next week in New Jersey. And if anyone's going to the game, let us know in the comments. We have some dorm debate uh, beanies. They're, they're getting all the sneak peeks tonight. (laughs) You're just giving them all the secrets tonight. Dorm debate beanies. We got, so we ordered five and we got 10 because five of them were on the wrong color. 
but they look exactly the same. This is the wrong color. So they look exactly <laughs> the same. But if you go to the game and you see us, then we're just, we're just gonna hand we're gonna hand you one. We're probably gonna have like three beanies on hand. So if we see three fans, then you're getting a free beanie. And those things cost a lot of money. So <laughs> you're getting a good deal. And, uh, and they'll get to meet us. What about meeting us? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean you can meet us too. We're not cool. And I'll, have... I'll give you some fantasy advice. You guys can show me your on, team. And <laughs> I'll let spot. you know if you should <laughs> imagine we run into somebody and they're like, wait, quick, it's 10 minutes before one. Should I put this guy in or this guy? <laughs> they're like they're like, I know he's at the game somewhere. We gotta find <laughs> gotta him. Gotta find him. I don't have a kicker this week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're like, Yeah, for a dollar, I'll tell you who who a kicker. <laughs> no, uh, anybody who sees us there, free advice. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. 100%. So hopefully you guys are all, are at the game and we could meet some of you guys, but um, we know that the Giants are doing pretty bad, so we don't blame you if you don't go to the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping Daniel Jones plays. He's he's already ruled out for this week, and it's like a few days before the game. So like there, the quote was Judge uh, Joe Judge says like he's cert- pretty certain that he'll return this year. So it doesn't seem like Jones is going to play when we go to the game, which oh stinks. Oh, my God. So it's going to be Glennon, Barkley, yeah. Galladay. Hopefully Galladay. Galladay's injured, right? Yeah, hopefully Shepard, but he's injured. Hopefully Tony, but he's injured. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be a Cowboys slaughter. Like, Yeah, we're going to get wrecked. <laughs> whatever, it's fine. We get to see Dak and CD and whatever. Yeah. Um, All right. So, yeah, that's the whole layout for next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's podcast and we will see you guys next week.